It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today I wanted to talk about a really cool little application that I came across. It's called WBO and it's basically a whiteboard online application that lets you collaborate with other people. So back when I was in the office before the pandemic happened, we did have whiteboards in all the conference rooms and it was really a great way to kind of share ideas and see things in kind of a grander scale and think about things and talk about things and collaborate. And then when everybody was done, we'd just take a, a picture with our cell phone, you know, to have that and, and make sure we could have that in our notes and, and make sure we had a good copy of it. And, and really, it was a great tool and kind of something that was missing whenever the pandemic started. There were some educational kind of sharing tools that had these kind of things and, and stuff like that, but nothing really great in the open source world that I can remember. So I came across this and I thought, you know, I'm still working remote. I'm going to continue to work remote. A lot of my team is remote, but tools like this are really super useful. And having one that you can self-host is just absolutely amazing. And this was just super simple. I really like it. So we're going to get into the installation and how to run WBO and do some collaborative whiteboarding right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like. Just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So it's pretty straightforward to get this thing installed. You can see a few screenshots here of some things that they've done with it already, but really running your own instance of WBO. There's several different ways you can do this, but really talking about a container, this is the way that they recommend even. It's very straightforward, and they, they tell you to do exactly what I'm going to tell you to do anyways. So we're going to kind of go through this uh, right now. So I'm going to bring over my server. So I'm logged into my server with SSH. First thing I do always is create a Docker folder. So I'm going to do mkdir docker, and then I'm going to call this, uh, I'm going to actually do mkdir-p docker slash wbo. So that's, that's going to be the folder I want. Now the nice thing about this command is if the Docker folder already exists, it won't try to create it again. It'll just try to create the next folder up. So that's what the dash P flag tells you. So that's really great because I don't have the WBO folder, but I do have the Docker folder. But if you don't, it'll create the Docker folder and the WBO folder for you. So now I'm going to see it in the Docker and do an LS. And you can see here, I've got this WBO folder right here. So I'm going to CD into that. And then if I do an LS, you see there's nothing inside of it. So we're going to create a new file called Docker dash compose.yml. So we're going to do nano space docker hyphen compose.yml. And then I've created basically from their example. So if I go back over here on the browser, uh, from their example here, I just took this and turned it into a docker compose file. And really that's all you have to do. Now they have other things that you can do down here and other options that they talk about as far as how to get this running. But for me, running it just on a local network and then maybe making a reverse proxy that I can turn on and off and have, you know, colleagues or friends or whoever get on and do a little whiteboarding with me is kind of my goal. Now, if you're wanting more features, then feel free to jump down to the rest of the section and kind of check out what other things they offer. But for me, this is a pretty straightforward kind of thing. And I'm just going to paste this in and we'll kind of talk about what's here. So really, we've got the service is going to be called WBO, the ports. Now, they set this as 5001 port um, rep mapped to 80. If you already have something using 5001, feel free to change this left side port number for your host. Just don't change the right side. The, the container expects this to be on port 80. But on the left side, you can change this to any open port on your host machine. Next thing he's got is a volume where he's mapped the WBO boards to slash opt app server data. Again, left side of the colon, feel free to make this path whatever you want. I like the way he's done it or the way that I've set it up actually with this dot slash, which means in the current folder. So inside of the WBO folder, it's going to create this next folder called WBO boards. And it's going to basically map that inside the container to slash opt slash app slash server data, which is fine. Um, if you want to call this something different or if you want to use a different path in your on your system, feel free to do that. Uh, and then we've got this image. So this is basically the image that we're going to pull down for WBO. We just want to make sure that we grab everything and we need that last little tick. I didn't grab that when I, when I did my copy. We're going to do control O to save, control X to exit. And then we need to do one more thing. So we're going to do CD dot dot. That's going to bring us back into the Docker folder. And again, we can see that WBO folder. We're going to do sudo chown 
dash capital R 1000 colon 1000 WBO. So we're going to use this command to basically change the ownership of this file to 1000 1000. It's expecting that whenever it runs. So we're just going to run this real quick and that's done. We'll CD back into WBO. We're just going to clear out the terminal, make it easy. And we're going to do docker hyphen compose up dash D and then we'll do ampersand ampersand docker hyphen compose logs dash F. So this first command means bring up the containers and run them as a daemon. So don't, don't make them stop. If I get out of the terminal or anything, let it run in the background. The second command is show me the logs after they're up and running. So this, I, I just like to do this the first time I run something to make sure nothing went wrong, check for any errors, anything like that. And once I control C to get out of the logs, the, the containers continue to run. So that's the way, that's the reason I run it this way. So I'm just going to hit enter. That's going to go out and pull down the containers that we need, the images that we need and get the containers started up and running here. It's pretty quick. It's not a very big image. So what we need to do is actually try to create this folder. Um, I didn't do that. I just let the Docker Compose command create it. So when we ran the change ownership, uh, it, it didn't help. So we're just going to do, uh, we're just going to go out of here and we're going to, we're just going to CD back into our Docker folder. We're going to do sudo chown r 1000 1000 WBO. And then we're just going to go and right back in and docker compose up dash D one more time. And then we're going to try this again. There we go. So now we're up and running. We've got WBO running and it's running on our local network here. So we could go to a public board. If we click on it, you'll see that it brings us up to a public board and really a public board means anybody can jump to it and get to it and do things on it and we can as well. So it always starts off on the hand, which is kind of like grab things and do them, but you can grab a straight line and make a straight line. You can do this with an ellipse. You can grab a rectangle. You can grab the pencil and just kind of freehand it, whatever you want to do. It's a lot of little, a lot of little tools here. And then they have the eraser tool. So if you just click on it, it gets rid of that line, I think. Uh, maybe. There we go. Yeah. Just cross it and it'll get rid of that whole thing. So that's running. That's great. That's got our public board. So now if we go back, we've got a private board. So this would be a board just for us. Nobody else could access this board. Again, starts off on the hand. We can grab other tools here. We can add text. So this is my board. Works fine. Um, no problem there. Okay. But we can again go back. There we go. And then we've got this option to say, you know what, I want to create a, a board that I can share with somebody. So it shows you the recent boards that you've been in as well, but I'm going to create a board. So I'm going to say Brian shares a board and I'm going to hit go. And you see up here, it shows Brian shares a board. So I'm just going to make a rectangle here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, uh, oops, incognito window is what I want, not a regular window. Let's see, incognito window right here. Yes, I'm gonna bring that over to the right. I'm gonna bring this one over to the left here and I'm gonna grab this. And now we've got the board. You can see one white, one black. So over here, if I draw freehand, making lines, I can draw freehand. And you see on the right side that it's actually drawing that. Now, if I go to the right side and I say, you know what, I'm gonna add another square. You can see on the left side that it adds the square. So that's pretty great. If I create a grid, you can see that the grid turns on on my side, but not on the other side. I can create grid dots. I can turn off the grid. Same thing on this side, grid, grid dots, turn off the grid. I can add text. We need this soon. Can you build it? So very straightforward. You see the text show up. I can type in the text over here and over here it shows up. So it's really nice. It's going back and forth. Now this is just, of course, on my local machine, but it is two different browsers that are basically sending that message back and forth through the server. So pretty great. Um, you can see that I've got my dot on, on the, I'm working on the right side, but you can see the dot moving on the left side. And if I go to the left side, you can see that I've got this dot because I don't have anything selected as a tool that's going to show a dot. Down here, you've got your colors. So if I change my color over here uh, to, I don't know, something like this. That should stand out a little bit from the other ones that we were drawing, but you can see I've got two different colors for what we've been drawing as well. So 
Really cool, it goes back and forth very easily like that. Now this is great for my local network, but what if I wanna make this function across my network and on all of my devices where I've got an actual URL? In that case, we need to use something like Nginx Proxy Manager. So when you log in Nginx Proxy Manager, you're gonna see your proxy hosts over here. I always click in, click add a proxy host, and I'm just gonna give this a name. Now, if you don't have this set up, you need to have a domain name that you own pointed to your public IP address. And then on the outside of your WAN to the inside on your LAN, you need to forward ports 80 and 443 so that those things go to the host machine where Nginx Proxy Manager runs. And then Nginx Proxy Manager runs in a Docker container and listens for requests for certain site URLs. And when it sees a request it knows, it sends you to that site. If it sees a request that it doesn't know, then it just sends you off to a congratulations page. So we're gonna call this draw.routemehome.org. Now I own routemehome.org. So I'm gonna just hit tab, create that chip, I'm going to put in the IP address of my server where that's running. Now, if this was running on the same machine as Nginx Proxy Manager, I could put in localhost. I could put in the Docker Zero IP address. I could, I could put in just the name of the actual container if I had both con the Nginx Proxy Manager container and this container running in the same Docker network that isn't the default network. So there's lots of ways to do it, but in this case, they're running on different machines on my network, so I have to put in the IP address of the host machine where the, the WBO is running. And then I'm gonna put in 5001 right here as my uh, port number because that's where it's running. I'm gonna block common exploits and make sure I've got WebSocket support checked. I'm gonna hit save. And that gives me an entry for draw.routemehome.org. And again, you can see that it pops up and now I'm on draw.routemehome.org. And if I put in again, uh, fun collab, I can hit go. And I'm on my drawing page. So I can copy this and again, Go open this up in my uh, incognito window. And here we are on two different pages. So if I grab this over here on the incognito side, you can see that it shows up over there. And oh, I made that very small. Let's make that half the screen. <laughs> Didn't realize I put that up in the quarter. Uh, and then over here I can put text. Looks good. Or I can grab the eraser tool and erase. Now I can't erase somebody else's stuff. That's interesting, didn't realize that. But if I grab the eraser tool, there we go. Okay, so I've got the eraser tool set. So yeah, pretty pretty interesting. Um, pretty easy to see, pretty easy to use. Now this is not running on HTTPS yet. So let's go fix that problem. So we're gonna go back into our Nginx proxy manager and I'm gonna make this full screen again. I'm gonna go back to my draw entry and I'm gonna go to the right to the three dots and I'm gonna click on edit. I'm gonna go to the SSL tab and I'm gonna click on none. I'm gonna select request a new SSL certificate, force SSL, HTTP2 support, make sure my email address is filled in and click on I agree. I'm gonna click on save and that's gonna go out and ask Let's Encrypt to challenge my site and try to issue me an SSL certificate. Now, if I ever get this where there's no error in here, it's just something weird going on. I just click save again and see if it'll actually save this time. If you get an error in there, you need to check the error and see what's wrong. But if there's no error listed, it's just kind of a weird glitch going on with Nginx Proxy Manager that sometimes it shows that. Now this time it went away, which is what I generally want, which means that it issued the Let's Encrypt certificate and you can see that right there. So now we can click on this and it's opening up an HTTPS, which is awesome. And then again, I can put, you know, uh, secure collab, collab. There we go and hit go. And again, I can bring this back over to the halfway point of my screen, maybe, there we go. Copy this address and send that to whoever I want to collab with. And when they put it in, they load up and now I can see their mouse moving and I can move my mouse and you can see it moving kind of on the other side, there's a little dot there. And then I can go here and I can say, you know what, let's create a rectangle. They see the rectangle. They say, you know what, I want an ellipse. I see the ellipse on this side. So again, collaboration going back and forth between these things across the internet now. I've got it running through an actual URL and I've got it covered with SSL. Now I don't have a login system set up here. They do talk about login again back on the GitHub page. So if you're interested in getting that set up, um, important for you to kind of go read that stuff. 
But again, I think this is just really great. And if you're going to use this inside your, your network at home with family, if you're going to use this on a VPN, if you're going to use this inside of a network at work, I think it's a really cool tool that lets you do some really great stuff and really makes it easy. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time. Thank <laughs> you.